a difference a year makes. The meeting of these two at this stage last season saw Falkirk effectively relegated. Our oh, Groves retained their first division status. Falkirk were saved only by the demise of Airdrie, and now they are 90 minutes away from the first division title and possibly even Premier League football. They do need a win here, and St Johnson to drop points to claim the title. And what a turnaround it's been for Stuart Taylor, signed from Drogheda earlier in the season. He scored three goals in the last four games, including, of course, last week's winner against St Johnston. Well, anything other than victory today will see our both consigned to the second division. John Brownlee will be playing in the fact that his side is one of just four to have beaten Falkirk this season. Realistically, it's all about preparing for next season for the Lichties, and they'll be hoping to keep Andy Dow, who comes here with vast experience after spells with St Mirren, Aberdeen, Hibs and Chelsea among his many clubs. And the referee for this one is Dougie Smith. Sunny days and bumpy pitches. It's the time of the year when prizes are won and relegation becomes reality. So much at stake here for both clubs. And throughout the afternoon, one eye will be on events down the road at Broadwood. Neither side can take their eye off the ball here, of course. Both will look to take care of their own business before worrying about events elsewhere. McPherson faced by Andy Dow. Craig McPherson will look to get this in his left foot into the penalty area. Well, eventually, a header coming in there from Stuart Taylor. Wide of goal. Some disappointment in the face of the number 11. He maybe feels he should be run better. A decent move once more by Falkirk, and once again, just the meanest glimpse of Craig Hinchliffe's goal, but wide of the post in the end. Falkirk keeping up the pressure. McQuilkin, nicely done by Jamie McQuilkin, searching out Lee Miller, got his head to the ball, but not enough power to get past Craig, Craig Hinchcliffe. Well, a decent pick up, decent save from the goalkeeper. A chance for McQuilkin, perhaps to get the ball across. Nichols it is, Owen Coyle! The opening goal for Falkirk. The ball swept in from the left. And Owen Coyle, some six yards out from goal, had the simple task of side footing the ball into the net to put Falkirk ahead. Much to the delight of this huge crowd here at Brockville. And Owen Coyle's 22nd goal of the season makes it Falkirk 1 at Brothdale. Yeah, good run from Taylor. Now right, Stuart Taylor, can he turn? Can he find another Falkirk player at the edge of the area? That player is David Nichols. Down he goes, play on to the referee. In the end, a very good save. Stuart Taylor's shot coming in. Take Hinchliffe over the top. Certainly, I think there are hopes among the Falkirk supporters. A penalty might have been given there. Play on, said Dougie Smith. It was a great shot from Taylor. An even better save from Hinchliffe. Chipped in, and oh, Brian Reid got his head to the ball but couldn't send it goalward. That could so easily have been goal number two for Falkirk. Here they are once more, Owen Coyle forward, but flag up to the near side, offside against Owen Coyle. John Hughes. Space room to come forward. Mark Kerr has made a good run. Good pass too. In fact, it's Owen Coyle trying to get the ball over. Again, he won the corner. The big man up for Falkirk into the middle. Good header it was. In the end from Stuart Taylor, but drifting wide of the post. There was a man on that post in any case for our growth, so it might not have been too dangerous. But it was a chance nevertheless. Well, it certainly hasn't been a classic 45 minutes due to a stiff breeze and a bumpy pitch, but it has at least been a spirited performance from our growth. Falkirk, well, they've only one goal to show for their efforts. That coming from Owen Coyle midway through the half. A nice, easy sidestep for Owen Coyle. At least he made it look easy. But it gives us here at Brockville a half-time score of Falkirk 1, our growth nil.
It's almost close enough to touch. Falkirk have one hand on the First Division trophy. They lead here while St Johnson are behind, declined at half time. So, 45 minutes from glory, but neither are our both out of this one. Looking forward for Taylor. There's a chance here, all right, for Stuart Taylor. Well, he got the ball past the goalkeeper, but wide of the posts. Clearly the best chance in the second half so far for Polka. Good ball forward. Stuart Taylor had made the run. He saw the goalkeeper coming off his line, tried to chip him. Managed to get the ball past Craig Hinsliff, but drifting wide of the post on the far side. Picked up now by Owen Coyle. Coyle has done well. Force back. The momentum perhaps has gone from this attack, but now McQuilkin. McQuilkin driven in. It's goal number two. And Owen Coyle has made it 2 0 for Falker. He started to move himself. And in the end, when Jamie McQuilkin drilled the ball into the penalty area, there was Coyle to make it two for him and two for Falker. Miller into the penalty area. Coyle on a hat trick on Coyle. Could this be his third? Great save by the goalkeeper. It's a brilliant save by Craig Hinchcliffe. It's the kind of chance Coyle would normally take, but the goalkeeper standing firm. Super save. Well, Mark Kerr's pass only as far as Andy Dow. Dow now coming forward, certainly can shoot Andy Dow, he's got power in that left foot. Alan Ferguson up to the task on that occasion. Down to the side for Greg Hensley for our brawls. Hensley goes outside, a couple of players in the middle for him. Scott McKenzie, he's only one the ball reached. Nichols, long ball. Looking for Coyle. Oh, that's a clear throw up. Clear kick out by Craig Hinsliff, only as far as Lee Miller. And here's Mark Kerr. Could this be number three? That seems to be all too easy now for Falkers, but Mark Kerr makes it a third. It's only his second goal of the season, third of the day for Falkirk, and you would expect at this stage, and that means the points are all wrapped up. Inside, looking for Feroz. Feroz, he's been working hard all afternoon with no little reward, to be fair. So oh, the free kick, Andy Dow swings it into the penalty area. Good header, and that's a goal for our broth. They pulled one back. And even an ironic cheer from the Falkirk supporters. It was a well taken goal indeed as the free kick came over from Andy Dow. John Cusick got his head to the ball and thundered it past Alan Ferguson. That makes it 3 1. The ball now for Colin Samuel, he could get the break of this one. Samuel now, good effort over the crossbar, and that's because it was saved by Craig Hinchliff. And that's a corner, but what an effort from Colin Samuel. And once again, what a save from Craig Hinchliff. Coyle trying to get the ball out from under his feet, looking for McQuilkin, who made the run into the penalty area. Jamie McQuilkin. Maybe with a chance to put this ball into the, the middle. Well played by the number three. Chips it in, Samuel, and now Coyle! Oh, and Coyle has done it in style. It's a hat-trick for number nine. It's the fourth goal of the day for Falkirk. And that superb effort wraps it up for Falkirk. Samuel on the run, 
Colin Samuel trying to get past his man. And we got a shot in. Samuel rattled the side net. Kevin McMullen unable to do anything about it. The whistle goes, the fans rise, and it's all over. Falkirk and the Bells, first division champions for 2003. Well, they opened the campaign with a 3-1 win at Somerset Park against the United. They finished it here with a 4-1 win over our growth and a comprehensive win in the end it was to Owen Coyle with the hat-trick. There was a goal as well for Mark Kerr. John Cusick's goal, no more than consolation. The final score at Rockville, Falkirk 4, at growth 1. Thanks very much to David McKinney at Rockville. Well, Owen Coyle's been saying all this week how the players should savour this moment, and boy did they savour it yesterday. There's John Hughes, possibly his last season, he'll decide in the summer whether he's going to play on, and those fans absolutely delirious at Brockville yesterday. Of course, the stadium, which after May or June this year will be no more, but it's witnessed in its last season a championship-winning performance from Falkirk, thoroughly well-deserved. There's goalkeeper Alan Ferguson on the back of Colin Samuel, who's possibly on his way at the end of the season, as might be Lee Miller and Andy Walker, possibly players like Mark Kerr as well. Yeah, I think so. I think for the moment, I think Falkirk should just enjoy what they've achieved this season. I think they've shown from day one, Jim, that they have been by far and away the, the best team in the league. And they're going to win it by a, a comfortable margin and uh, thoroughly deserved. They've been, they've been the best side, no doubt. And of course, now that they haven't uh, played for a number of years, I have never actually won a title. You know, have four or five. I've got five promotions, but to actually go and win the title being the number one spot, I think it's thoroughly deserved. All season, I think we have been the team in the division. I think we proved that again today. You've done it the right way as well. 4 1 here and the hat trick for yourself. What a third goal that was. Yeah, well, it was always nice from a personal point of view, but the biggest thing was the, the collective effort. Myself and John came out at a difficult time after Ian. Had, you know, you can't take away what Ian's done. It's set the foundations for, you know, for the club. And we've been fortunate enough to carry that on, and you know you can see that there. What, what it means to the fans, and they thoroughly deserve it. Oh, it's unbelievable! I can't believe this is happening. Really. Last year was getting relegated, and now we're, we've won the league. It's some turnaround in the space of a year, isn't it? Oh, it's unbelievable! All the boys have worked really hard all season. It's great to get paid off and win the league. I tell you what, you, you did well yourself here, Will. Your second goal of the season. I know. Actually, all the boys have been doing a bit of stick for no scoring, so I'm delighted we got a strike on for the last game of the season. Alan, for you, you were out of the game for so long through injury. What does it mean for you today? Oh, I think it makes it even more special. I mean, listen to this. Uh, I found it, it sort of said to me a couple of years ago when I was out of the game that this was happening to him, I would have laughed at him, you know. In, in so, terms of the game itself, it could hardly have gone better for you. Yeah, we knew it was going to be stuffy, you know, full cut. Uh, we're, we're trying to win the league today. Our both are fighting for their lives. And uh, you know, it's going to be difficult in the, the conditions. We'll be a bit worse today. Uh, the, the pitch is a bit fiery, but at the end of the day, it's 4 1 and it's a great result and it's another home, home win. There you go, that Yogi Bar! John, well done. We can only say congratulations to you. It's a huge day for Paul Curtin and yourself, no doubt. Yep, uh, tremendous, David. Um, the older you get, you appreciate it more. And I'm really going to try and take the two in. Um, don't forget all the work we started with Ian McCall. He built the team. Me and Owen just um, took over it and the response we've had for the, for the players and the supporters has been nothing but exceptional.